Okay, and the next talk by Chen uh, Bar Marina Alterman, Johannes Giko. Johannes. And then at Levin, the talk will be given by Marina. Hi. Thank you. So in this talk, I will be talking about uh, coherent scattering and uh, speckles. And I hope uh, I will uh, convince you that it's uh, important and interesting. So if we shine light at a scattering medium, like a piece of soap or a tissue, for example, coherent such as laser, it gets scattered multiple times. Uh, so, uh, and then you can see this noise-like uh, speckle image. So what happens there is that the light can take many paths through the material, which have different uh, lengths. Um, if the phase of this uh, path agree, we get constructive interference, and then we get a bright spot. If the phase does not agree, we get destructive interference, and we get this dark spot. So then we get this uh, speckle pattern. So it may look like noise, and usually considered as, use, as nuisance, but actually it has strong statistical properties. For example, look what happens when we tilt the illumination. The speckle pattern shifts. Uh, this, call, this is called the memory effect. And I will be talking about this a lot through uh, this talk. Um, so uh, we can go uh, to the lab and uh, capture these uh, speckle patterns with a real laser, but the ones that you see here are actually simulated. So this is what I'm going to talk about, is a, a Monte Carlo framework we've come up with for a physically accurate rendering of these uh, speckle patterns. So before that, uh, let's see why being able to simulate speckles and speckles in general are uh, important. So uh, studies from the last four decades have shown that statistical correlations in speckle images, such as the memory effect, are very useful for being able to image uh, through scattering media. And uh, speckles and their statistics uh, can be encountered in many imaging uh, applications, uh, ranging from uh, biology to security, medicine, remote sensing, and astronomy. So uh, just as an example, uh, uh, I'll uh, talk about this uh, nice work by Katz and colleagues, where the goal is to uh, look at an object hidden behind the uh, scattering media. So if we just capture uh, the image of the scattered light, all we can see is this speckle image which do not at all look like the uh, original object. But it turns out that uh, due to the memory effect, it is possible to recover the underlying object just by computing the autocorrelation of this uh, speckle image. OK, so now let's see what was the best way to simulate speckles before this work. So let's consider a scattering material like this uh, piece of soap. If we zoom in, we see that it consists of a collection of scattering particles embedded in some surrounding material. For simplicity here, I will show everything in flatland. Uh, the scattering medium is 2D, the sensor will be 1D, and so is the speckle pattern. So if we know the exact locations of these scattering particles and the illumination conditions and the sensor conditions, the straightforward way to simulate speckles will be to numerically solve the wave equations and get this scattered field. This is the, the speckle pattern. The scattered field is actually a complex number, but with a camera, we can only measure its intensity. Now, if we zoom in to another region of this SOAP, we see different locations of particles and therefore different speckle patterns. Now, although these uh, uh, accurate wave solvers are really accurate, 
They are very, very slow, and therefore they're impractical and can be used only for tiny or very optically thin media. Another reason why this is so impractical is the fact that we need to know the exact locations of the scattering particles, where in graphics we usually do not have access to such information, and we like to describe materials by using uh, macroscopic statistical properties of scatterers, such as, for example, their intensity. So these microscopic properties of uh, scattering have given rise to Monte Carlo methods, uh, which we can use to simulate scattering in graphics. And actually, these Monte Carlo methods are orders of magnitude faster than the numerical wave solvers. And also, the input is the density of the scatterers, rather their exact positions. However, these classical Monte Carlo methods do not consider wave phenomena, and therefore, all we can get is this small ima smooth image of the scattered light. You can think uh, of it as some uh, low-resolution version without speckles of some high-resolution version of speckle image we are interested in. So in this work, our goal is to extend these efficient Monte Carlo tools to evaluate speckles and their coherent statistics. So for this, um, first let's see how the wave equation solution and the Monte Carlo rendering relate to each other. So suppose we use this microscopic density of the scatterers and we sample different configurations of scattering positions. We use the wave solver to compute the scattered field. We square it to get the intensity. And now, averaging over all particle instantiations, we get this smooth intensity curve, which is also exactly equivalent to what you get from the standard Monte Carlo algorithm. And of course, you can see that there are no speckles. So although this gives us some information about speckles, namely the expected intensity, but on its own, it's not enough to reproduce all speckle characteristics. So uh, to see what we are missing, let's get back to this experiment, but in a slightly different form. So again, we sample different particle uh, configurations. We solve the wave equation to get the scattered field. But now, instead of computing the uh, intensity, we compute the outer product and averaging this over all particle instantiations, we get the field covariance. So one row in this matrix is the average of speckles at sensor i times all other speckles at all other viewing directions. So actually, the, Monte Carlo, the standard Monte Carlo intensity algorithm is exactly the diagonal of this matrix. But what we observe is that there are also non-zero of diagonal elements which are absent from the standard Monte Carlo algorithm. But what else? We, uh, in fact, there are even more second-order statistics uh, that we are missing here, such as the memory effect. So to see this, let's again consider this experiment once again, but now we add another illumination direction. Now, again, we use the wave solver to compute the scattered field for a, another illumination direction. And now, if we look closely, what we see is that the scattered field from the blue direction and the scattered field from the green direction are a highly correlated but shifted versions of each other, and this is the memory effect. So now we compute the covariance across pixels and the two illuminations, and we get this covariance matrix. So what you can see here is that the diagonal is actually shifted from the main diagonal. This is the memory effect. And why is it shifted? Because, as I showed you, the uh, scattered field from two nearby illuminations are most similar when they are appropriately shifted. So we see that to simulate accurate speckle images, we need to be able to simulate not only across pixels, but also across illumination uh, correlation statistics. Okay, so we can do this uh, like I just showed you, using these exact wave solvers. 
but these would be very, very, very slow. This is why we developed an efficient Monte Carlo method uh, to compute the speckle covariance. So next, I will talk about this uh, Monte Carlo rendering algorithm. So first, let's begin with the standard intensity Monte Carlo rendering. So this is based on expressing intensity measurements as an integral of contributions from all possible paths the photons can follow, starting from the light source, ending at the sensor. The contribution of each path is a throughput function f, and it depends on the scattering uh, parameters, such as the extinction coefficients. This represents the density of the scatterers. The scattering albedo represents the absorption and the phase function. Now, um, in general, it is not possible to compute this integral analytically, and therefore, uh, Monte Carlo algorithms use important sampling of paths and some their contributions. Now, let's look at rendering covariance. So, as we show in the paper, we can express the covariance as an integral of the product of contributions of pairs of paths. So to make this concrete, let's add another illumination and another viewpoint. And now we need to consider two paths, a pair of paths, one starting from light one ending at view one, and another starting at light two ending at the second view. So as we're simulating field covariance and not intensity, the contribution of each path is now a complex throughput number uh, describing the changes of amplitude and phase along the path. The phase is actually proportional to the length of the path, and now the product of contributions of a pair of paths is also a complex number with a phase that is the phase difference, and the phase difference is proportional to the difference in path lengths. Now, know that when the two paths are the same, then the phase difference becomes zero, and the product of these two complex numbers, numbers is a real positive number, and in fact, it is exactly equivalent to the throughput used for the uh, standard Monte Carlo intensity rendering. So, unfortunately, considering all possible pairs of paths is impractical. So, how can we choose a, a pairs of paths? So for this, we make an important observation about selecting these pairs of paths. So since the, to, to visualize this, since the product of their contributions is a complex term, let me plot it on a complex plane. Now let's fix one path and start making small perturbations to the second one. As we randomly change the second path, you can see that we end up with points that have essentially a random phase due to the very different uh, path lengths. And at the end, all of these contributions will be averaged to zero in the integral. But now let us change the second path such that, such that it shares the same nodes as the first one, except the starting and the ending points. So as I explained earlier, in this case, the contribution of the path pair becomes positive real number. And now, if we consider only pairs of paths with this property, we will be getting only positive uh, contributions, which will sum up in the integral to a real positive number. So based on this argument, we conclude that we only need to sample path pairs that share the same nodes. This dramatically shrinks the sampling path space and enables us uh, to come up with, with efficient covariance rendering. So actually, the path space is something very similar to the standard Monte Carlo uh, methods, and therefore we can use the standard Monte Carlo algorithm to sample our path. And essentially we get the same complexity as the standard Monte Carlo rendering. So I just gave you a very high-level explanation about this, but uh, for the details, please see, our, uh, please see proofs in our SIGGRAPH paper. So now I will show you a, a covariance matrices computed with our algorithm, 
and to convince you that they are physically accurate, I will compare them to the covariance matrices computed using an exact wave solver. So this is the setup. The scattering media is illuminated by a pair of illuminations, directions, and measured at the range of uh, viewing, uh, viewing directions. So the first case, the two illuminations are both at angle zero, and we get these two matrices. Now we tilt the second illumination to four degrees, we get these two matrices, and to 20 degrees to get these two matrices. So first notice how our matrices are exactly identical to the ones you get from the exact wave solver. Another thing to notice here is how the diagonal shifts with illumination, and this is the memory effect I showed you before. Another thing to notice is that I don't know if you can see this, but actually our matrices is even less noisy than the ones you get from the wave solver. And while the matrices from the wave solver can, uh, the computation can take days, uh, using our Monte Carlo algorithm, it, contains, it, it takes only uh, several minutes. So now that we have these speckle statistics, we can render as many speckles as we want. So for example here, we have rendered speckle fields for two different materials. The first row is a material with an isotropic phase function where the pro um, uh, probability to scatter to any direction is identical. The second row is a material with a very forward scattering phase function. So note, first notice how the speckles shift with illumination. It is known in the literature that the classical memory effect holds only for relatively small angles, and also that the exact extent of the memory effect is different for different materials, and we can see, and we can see this in, in uh, our simulation. See here how this uh, pattern here is already faded, but here it's still preserved. Now, using these images, we can compute co cross correlation between the images and compute the exact extent of the memory effect. And we can do this for uh, any material. Actually, in the, in the literature, there is an uh, analytical uh, solution for the exact extent of the memory effect, but it's based on the diffusion approximation when the number of scattering events is very high. But actually, it holds only for some materials, not for all the materials. But in practice, people have uh, seen in the lab that the extent of the memory effect is often wider, but it can be measured only empirically in the lab. But using our algorithm, we can compute now the exact memory effect for all different materials, all different uh, geometries and uh, scattering parameters. Uh, so now let me get back to this example of seeing through scattering media and how our algorithm can help. So as I showed you, if we uh, look at objects uh, hidden behind the scattering median, all we can see in this bunch of speckles, and we can recover the underlying object by computing the autocorrelation of the uh, speckle image. This works nicely, but only under specific conditions. We have simulated this with our algorithms, and we can see that using this uh, simple object, the algorithm works, but if we use slightly bigger object, the algorithm fails. But using our algorithm, we can compute the exact extent of the memory effect and uh, fix the correlation, and uh, we can recover the object. Please see um, uh, for this um, the results in these papers. So to summarize, we consider the problem of coherent scattering, and the speckles images that are ca captured are actually have strong statistical properties. We have formulated a pass integral formulation for speckle covariance, and this enabled us to come up with an efficient Monte Carlo rendering for covariance and also physically accurate speckle patterns. And using this, we can compute the exact extent of the memory effect, and this can potentially improve imaging applications that rely on speckle statistics. So now, next time you want to simulate speckles, you can take an image and uh, use our code for this. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. While the next speaker sets up, there is time for one quick question.